church planting and team formation the, the alternative view. So what we've done is we've talked about forming teams and we've talked about forming diverse teams. Now we're talking about, um, do you remember we talked last time about the, um, the oppositional learner? Somebody who tried to learn the exact opposite of, uh, of what they were being taught. So uh, I decided to kind of practice a bit of oppositional learning on my own teaching and run it completely backwards and said, well, what happens if you don't form a team before you launch a church? And uh, a new report has just come out just the last few days, which is from Myriad, Gregory Center for Church Multiplication. Excellent report saying it's basically the voice of the lay church planters. Unpaid church planters, how are they feeling? How are they rolling? You know, what's happening? Um, what he says in that, he says that 50% of all churches are planted essentially without a team. In other words, they plant the church and then they gather the team. If you build it, they will come. Um, the guy who um, killed General Gordon in Sudan, uh, Muhammad Ahmed the Mahdi, started life as a hermit. Just sort of preaching, preaching repentance forgiveness of sins in the desert. And um, the people gathered round him, then it became a movement. Um, but the question is, can you plant a church just by doing something? Now, there are a bunch of advantages to this. To this. I mean, you can read this. It's basically, they're very often very concrete. If you talk, vision, blah, 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 often people don't understand what you're doing. If you do something, they get it. It's like, I see that. And you can see the extraordinary power of activities to glue people together. Um, we often reference Jonathan climbing a cliff with his armour bearer. Saul was just sitting there. He wasn't doing anything. Jonathan did something. And it, and it sparked a change. So doing something can often be a really powerful way of gathering a team. Even if, at first, it seems you really don't have anyone with you. Now, real quick, because we want our time back, I'm just going to reference what's in this document. A number of churches, actually, including churches in and around the Antioch network, have been planted this way. So Emmanuel Church in Radcliffe, with Julie McCauley, basically grew out of an activity. Um, there's a Saturday night gathering in Halifax that essentially grew out of the food bank. Uh, there's another movement I know this is basically do an ALF course and just mechanistically plant a church out of an ALF course. So people can and do do it. Again, this report suggests that 50% of admittedly a small sample are planted this way. Now, we've talked a little bit about the advantage of that. They're concrete, they're tangible, they're right in front of you. Here's a bunch of disadvantages is that you can end up getting a if you do this, you can end up getting burnt out, particularly if your activity is super social, like a food bank, um, you can basically be unclear about the direction of travel. If you do it as a kind of social outreach activity, and I volunteered on a food bank, essentially, you get all of the most vulnerable people in a given area, and then you end up doing a ministry, not a church. Because, I mean, there's a persistent habit of church plants. Most church plants generally crash. And they, they tend to, and in poor areas, they crash for a specific reason. Which is that they go, they plant with high vision, maybe a decent team, and then lots of vulnerable people are the first people who are attracted into it. <clears throat> They're then really high needs people. Your happy, brave new team invests into those high needs people. It stays a two-speed church, and then it just crashes because it's, it's just too hard work. <clears throat> so if you deliberately start gathering people who are the most vulnerable, you're really exposing yourself to that kind of crash. And um, I say, we, most churches, estates church. So again, if you want an example of this, talk to Tom King, who's planning close church in, in Radcliffe. That, that's his experience. Um, so there are, there are huge disadvantages of doing it, particularly through social action projects. Advantages, there's disadvantages. I guess that the one thing that we would say to you 
is that don't reject this idea outright. But if you do it, be super clear about the direction of travel, keep your goal in front of you, and favour things that have the gospel of Jesus as their central thing. Because if you like, if you favour like social activities, you are going to hit a wall. I, I think. So I'm just going to stop there. You've got the thing in front of you.